What's up Giants fans? How y'all doing? It's your boy No Name back at it with another video. Uh obviously this Giants talk we out here. Um it's been a slow week for Giants news guys. It's been a really slow week. We've had a couple signings here and there which I'll talk about. But other than that really it's been kind of a slow week. I've been like going through you know the usual websites, NewJersey.com, Giants, Wire, all of them. Uh, you know, Twitter, Instagram, all that, trying to see if there's anything else, but uh, other than that, there's nothing much. So to kind of fill up the video a little bit, I uh, spiced it up with some interesting news that I found on Giants Wire, and also, you know, a little bit of announcements and whatnot. So first things first, before I get into all of it, I'd like to thank all of you for checking out my second mock drive video. Is doing well, is doing pretty much on the same pace as the first one was. The first one is already at like 1.5k uh, views. Thank you so much for that. This one is at uh, around 470 something views. Thank you for that. Um, thank you guys for checking out the, uh, I'll admit right now, the horrible video <laughs> that I did on, um, on the uh, NBA playoff predictions and uh, guys you gotta realize that audio yes it's horrible I even said it in the video I tried my best to edit and fix it but I do have my limits uh, the reason we couldn't re-record the video is because we couldn't uh, night time and I we couldn't figure out a time to meet up so we were kind of stuck until last minute to record it and then because of that we didn't have the mic between us because it wasn't in person so I had to like record over the phone and I, I couldn't use discord because it was on the phone to record and all that and it just didn't work out properly so I'm just gonna put up pictures of our uh, bracket predictions both of our bracket predictions on the Twitter on Instagram and Instagram so you guys should follow that uh, in my opinion I think they're really good uh, so far we're I mean it's only like what two games into the playoffs so so far we've done pretty good uh, we've really been pleasantly surprised by the Nets nighttime has them going all the way I personally think they will beat the 76ers but then from there on out it's a uh, it's kind of they're going to be washed out. So for more on that, just check out our Twitter and Instagram while I have the pictures posted up. So then, big news first. The biggest news we got so far this past week. Sterling Shepard, wide receiver for the New York Giants, got his four-year, $41 million deal uh, last Wednesday, I think it was. That's when it was, it was first reported. So i like to say, first of all, four years, $41 million. That's pretty cheap for us. I mean... We came off a contract that was worth twice as much, and it's, uh, I think we spent the money pretty well considering the remaining free agents. We basically took one wide receiver's money and then split it into two with Tate and Shepard. I, I mentioned uh, I think Tate was a bit overpaid because of his age, but it's still cheap considering what we used to pay. And then Shepard, I won't even say that it's cheap. This is the money that he deserves. He's proven to us as Giants fans, he's proven to us as just a pure slot receiver that he's one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. He's one of the most underrated slot receivers in the NFL. And my mistake that I meant to say pure receiver, but he does his best work in the slot. We've seen him go outside. We've seen him cut outside and catch deep balls down downfield. His injury history, not as worrisome as Beckham's. He, he's only been injured really once or twice in his career. The main one that comes to mind is during that 2017 injury when basically everybody on the Giants offense got injured. But Shepard, he's, He's like the pure image of a giant, a lot like Barkley. Works hard, produces on the field, keeps himself off the field. Nice nice dude, family man, all that. I love Sterling Shepard. I love him since he came out of uh, college. I always thought that he was going to be something big. This is his chance to sign, shine as the number one receiver. And he doesn't even need to be the number one receiver to produce on our team. He's consistently produced over 500 yards every single year on this team. I think he's going to be a 1,000 yard receiver next season. And if not, it's going to be like 900 for him and 900 for Tate, which is going to have a good collective. So I, I like the deal also. Like I said, 4, 1, 40, 1, 4 years, 41 million. That's like 10.25 million a year around that. Pretty pretty good. He deserves it. Some would argue he deserves more, but I'm glad he agreed to it. I'm glad he stuck to the deal. Um, according to Giants Wire, it's, our, like, it's actually like he was out on date night with his wife. So that's kind of funny when he got information about the deal. Obviously, he probably knew that it was in the works because his agent had to work it out. Um, I just like the deal. I like that we kept him on here. I think he's going to be a giant for life, hopefully. And I do have my fears. Of course, I do. I mean, just last year, we did sign Beckham to a $95 million deal. And the very next year, deal them away. Uh, 
I, I'm kind of hoping that we don't do that with Shepard because we really have no reason to do it. You could have argued that we did it to Beckham because of his off the field behavior. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Shepard. He's almost the perfect receiver on and off the field. Like I said, he produces consistently. He's clutch. He has that clutch gene in him. You could rely on him in big games. Of course, excluding that Packers game. I, but I mean, every single receiver in that Packers wildcard game a couple years back just sort of disappeared. But you could count on him. And off the field, he's, he's perfect. He just keeps to himself. He says the right things. He's always a team player. Like I said, he reminds me a lot of just like what the image of a perfect New York Giant is. Very similar to Saquon Barkley and Eli Manning. So culture-wise and locker room-wise, he's good. I really hope that we don't deal him away. And so that was like the biggest deal that we got done this past week. Uh, and, and like I guess you could say smaller deals, we got, we signed Corey Co Coleman to a tender. So we have him for another year. Same thing with Russell Shepard. Except it wasn't a tender, it was, it was actually just a one-year deal. I'm more happy with the Coleman tender than I am with Shepard. I see a lot more potential in Coleman. It's not. I'm not disappointed with uh, Russell Shepard's deal. That is not Sterling Shepard. I'm not disappointed with his deal either. I mean, it was a one-year deal. It's pretty cheap. In the 12 games he did play uh, last year, he had 10 receptions for 188 yards and two touchdowns. So uh, that's pretty good production considering he was only targeted like a handful of times. He's obviously a backup receiver, good depth on the depth chart. I mean, I don't mind it at all. Like I said, I see more potential in Coleman. This guy, I don't know, there's something about him. You gotta remember, he was a he was a first round pick. There's something about him that he has to tap into. Maybe he will never tap into it, but we'll still have a really good third receiving option. Now that on the defensive side, the Giants actually went out to uh, the AAF. I never really spoke about the AAF on this channel because I was like, I'll probably do it when it gets bigger. Now we all know how that turned out, kind of disbanded. My personal opinion, I, I kind of liked it. I thought it would have been good to have the AEF as sort of the NFL's version of the G League from the NBA. Just a developmental league where you could get some players off of, and that's essentially what NFL teams have been doing since it disbanded, the Giants being one of them. We signed an AAF defensive back, Henry Tolliver. And Tolliver is actually a player who's had experience in the NFL. He used to be part of the uh, Colts a couple years back before the AEF. I remember seeing him in a couple preseason Colts games. I'm not sure if he played any regular season Colts games, but um, he signed with an undrafted free agent with the Colts. Here it says on uh, this article I'm reading. He had 36 starts in college and 31 passes defended and eight interceptions. So pretty strong college career. So I'm kind of surprised he went undrafted. Maybe there's something about him. He's six foot, flat 188 pounds and a 4.63 at the 40. Not as fast as you'd like it to be, but I mean, the Giants, uh, they've done well with their one undrafted free agent cornerback so far, Grant Haley. Grant Haley's performed definitely above and beyond compared to what he was, which is an undrafted free agent. He performed like somebody taken in the mid-rounds. So hopefully we got the same result out of this guy, Henry Tolliver, if that's how you pronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So now we're kind of going to shift back on the offense, go into a little bit of a quarterback talk. And before I do that, like I said, I threw in a couple of funny stories here. The one I really want to mention is... Uh, well, I consider it funny is that um, the way Eli Manning learned about the OBJ trade. Now, I personally thought they may be told him beforehand because I'll admit sometimes, you know, that media perception gets to you, even though you have, you you know, you could have the mindset of, oh, you can't believe anything in media. And I try to have that as much as possible, especially with this Giants team. But it kind of got to me a little bit. I was like, Eli probably did know about it. Not like, oh, he was, he was like doing the evil laugh, rubbing his hands like Edelman did, you know, that evil rub hand meme. Um, that he was, you know, involved with it. No, I thought he knew it as in uh, Gettleman or the owner probably told him, oh, we're gonna be trading Odell to the Browns. But no, according to Eli, at least, when they began, when they began off-season off -season training, somebody actually asked him where he was that day they traded Beckham. And according to Eli, he was just on the couch watching TV and he caught it on the bottom of the screen. Like, for example, you're watching, like, say, NFL Network or something. On the bottom of the screen, they had that little news feed going by. And Eli said he just caught it and he had to do a double take. He said it was taking him back and he wanted to call Odell to find out how he's doing. You know, he's been his teammate for five years despite their differences and whatnot. But then, you know, he kind of goes on to say he uh, calmed down a little bit. and he It's not like he um, didn't expect it because you got to expect everything on the business side, the NFL and all that. And he, he said Odell obviously 
Eli being Eli praised him and says that everybody on the team has to step up now because there's going to be a big hole on offense. So, I mean, I don't know. I just find that kind of funny. Wanted to share it with you guys before we jump, jump in to uh, bigger quarterback news out here. The first one being also from Eli during that same interview, I believe, when they started off-season training. Actually began yesterday, the April 15th? I'm not wrong, yeah, April 15th, off-season training began yesterday. And in the same interview, Eli, uh, he said, this is almost word for word, he was basically like, he expects the Giants to draft his successor, his heir apparent, within this upcoming draft. And he said it's his job, he'll do his job, which is to help train that guy, help him study film, help him basically get ready for the starter role. Uh, he didn't say he'll help train him for next year or anything, he just said he'll help get him into that role. He'll do his job and he'll try and go out there and win games at the same time. Now I found this interesting because we've, we've never really gotten like a solid confirmation from Gettleman or Pat Shermer or even Eli whether or not where we're going to do, what we're going to do, where we're going to go with this quarterbacking position. Terry from Eli I think is a surprise, but we got to keep in mind I mean, he could literally be speaking about the way we've drafted quarterbacks in the past two years. It's kind of forgettable because we've done essentially nothing with them, but we've drafted quarterbacks in the past two drafts. It's just that we've taken them in the mid-rounds. He never said, oh yeah, I expect us to take Dwayne Haskins or Kyler Murray or somebody in the first round. He just said, I expect us to take a quarterback. And I'm mentioning this because I don't want fans to get worked up over it or excited over it, whichever side you're on. I just want y'all to take it with a grain of salt. It could literally mean we're taking a quarterback in the third or fourth round again, which is fine because I personally believe after reviewing everything, I had that Dwayne Haskins video, wow, I still think he's the best in the draft. But unless we trade down and still somehow get him, I don't want to take him at six. I'd rather wait until next year because we're already in rebuilding mode. There's no point in going for a quarterback now when you could build up the team around him and then drop a quarterback in there. Patrick Mahomes was very similar. Yeah, we've, uh, they've said we're going to do a Kansas City, mo <laughs> Kansas City model. But part of the Kansas City model was surrounding Patrick Mahomes with possibly the best talent you could have around him. He had some of the best offensive weapons in Tyreek Hill and, uh, and Kareem Hunt. And then he had a pretty good O-line to support him. The defense wasn't great, yeah, but it did its job, especially come playoff time. I was pleasantly surprised by how hard the defense performed. So if we do that, we build up our offense, mainly the offensive line, and then build up the defense, and I mean almost everything on the defense. Then we sort of plop a quarterback in there. I wouldn't mind at all. I'd prefer it that way, to be frank with y'all. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that, you know, that is that is out there. Eli obviously knows about it. He knows, he definitely knows his time as a starter is probably coming to an end, whether it's because of age or because of arm talent or whatnot. I do believe this will be his last year. Uh, love and appreciate Eli for everything he's done. It's nice to see that he's being honest with the media, but like I said, take it with a grain of salt. So moving on in other uh, quarterback news along the same line of the draft, Dwayne Haskins is on a two-day visit with the Giants uh, between, well he was, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, he was on a two-day visit with the Giants, and uh, he, that, that came from Twitter out of Dan Hope. Uh, he tweeted it out, and Ian Rapport also tweeted it out. Now, I'm not really surprised by this. I mean, we've known that, uh, that he was probably going to have a meeting and visit with the Giants. I mean, they have 30, in case you guys didn't know, they have uh, 30 chances to meet with any 30 players they want to meet with, they, where they can interview and get to know the player better than they could outside of that part of the draft process. And I'm not surprised that they're using one on Dwayne Haskins. They've already used one on Kyler Murray, or they plan to use one on Kyler Murray. So I like to see that they're exploring their options with the quarterback. What I am kind of, I don't know, shocked. I don't know if shocked is the right word. I guess intrigued by is, the, is that his visit is two days instead of the usual one day. I don't know if around the league that's, uh, that is something that happens. Like with certain players, the teams just meet two days with them. But I don't know, I find that kind of weird. Other than that, there's nothing out of the ordinary there. It's, like I said, it's nice to see that they're exploring their options. It's nice to see that they're going to try and get to know him better. Because in recent weeks, in case you guys haven't not noticed, his draft stock has been dropping. It wasn't like at a fast pace, but it's at a relatively slow pace. And in the media now, there's even people who had him going you know, like within the top 10. There's some people that have him going within the bottom 10. And I even heard one, uh, some guy on uh, NFL Network say he doesn't think that he's a, or was it Fox Sports 1? 
don't know. One, one of those two networks. But they basically said they don't even think he's a first-round talent. Now, I think that's blasphemous. <laughs> that's just me. Like I said, I think he's the best quarterback in this draft. If I had to rank him talent-wise, I'd pro probably put him, like, within 12 to 15 range. You know, that's why I say I'm not sure if I'm completely comfortable with taking him six. But we've seen it all the time. Well, every year we've seen it. Teams reach for quarterbacks. But it's nice to see that they're getting to know him, trying to see if he really is worth the pick at six because he's had meetings with the Broncos and with the Redskins this past week. And I think that's partially because he knows that he's been slipping in draft stock, whether he, that's deserving or not. But yeah, like I said, other than that, there's nothing on the ordinary there. And I see they're just their options. And the last thing in quarterback news that's taking place this week was right this morning. Russell Wilson signs his four-year, $140 million deal to remain a Seattle Seahawk until he's 35. Wow, that's a lot of money, man. That's $35 million a year on top of the $17 million he's going to be making this year. Does he deserve it? Yeah, I think he deserves it. He took them to two Super Bowls. He blew one of them, but he's been consistently one of the best quarterbacks in this league since he's gotten one of the best quarterback money in this league. He's not the highest paid player at that $35 million a year. Uh, what does this mean for the Giants? Well, I never really spoke on the topic because I was never convinced that he was going to be here. I always thought it was a pipe dream. I never thought Russell Wilson was going to come here simply because I thought it was this, this entire shebang was just a smoke to get him money and, and it worked. I mean, it's sad that he had to do that because he deserved that money, but it worked out in the end. He's a Seahawk. I don't think any like there's any bad blood between him and the Seahawks. It's just... He just wanted to push them to make his deal happen sooner rather than later. Uh, I never, yeah, like I said, I never saw him coming to the Giants in any way, shape, or form, whether it was through free agency next year or a trade this year, simply because then there's going to be an even bigger contradiction with our plan, which we still don't know what our plan is. But if we take a quarterback in the middle of his prime and we're in the middle of a rebuild, we're going to be spending a lot of money and resources on that quarterback that in normal rebuild, we wouldn't be spending. We'd put it towards other positions. In a rebuild, it always makes sense to get a new quarterback. So I, I don't know. I just never saw it as a, as a sensible decision. And even then, if we took him this year, what are we gonna do with Eli? Uh, you know the Giants already. They're not gonna cut him and kick him out of the street. They even probably cut off their own hand before they do that. But yeah, I don't know. I always thought it was far fetched. I always thought it was far fetched. So yeah, guys, that's about it for this video. I mean. I just wanted to get something out there relating to the Giants, so I, I, I kind of compiled a lot of stuff that happened over the past week into one video. Maybe I'll continue this, especially over the summer when like the only thing we'll have for the Giants would be like their uh, OTAs and their summer scrimmages and whatnot, so maybe I'll combine this and do it for the summer. Uh, I'll probably do other stuff, uh, NFL videos, just general NFL videos, but um, tell me if you like it, tell me if you hated it, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. You're...